of aiding it. The yeah. killing in Plateau, they accuse the military of aiding it. The killing in, Zam in Zamfara, they accuse the military of aiding it. Every killing in Nigeria that has recorded the mass killing of the people in Nigeria have always the military hand in it. So they are the source. They give them arms, they give them protection, they aid them, they even coordinate the attack against the people. Go to the last attack, the last 10 attacks you know why, do you for see? the indigenous people in Nigeria today. You are going to well, hear the story yeah, of how military aided them directly. And the worst part is, you know, or the good part is that the people, the victim, are no longer afraid to speak up. So they tell you right before your very own eyes the, the role the military played in the attack against their people. So the victims are telling the stories. On and until they start attacking the military that are aiding this terrorist attack, they will continue to live in IDP camp. So Biafra have identified our problem and we are tackling it. Thank you. Can I ask a follow-up question, sir? Okay, my second question is this. Don't you think that you the 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 the, the reason why they put your names among those wanted in Nigeria is connected with the fact that you are dislodging the terrorists and the kidnappers from Biafra land? Of course, that is the only reason. There is no other reason. The only reason is that we find out the mechanism to deal with them. And it happens that since the history of the Biafra agitation and liberation, we are the only people who have actually identified the source of the problem and tackling it. That's why you see them doing what they have never done before. That's why you see them talking about me at the National Assembly. There has never been any time that the Biafra agitators, agitators was being discussed at the National Assembly by all senators who are the product of Nigeria. And everybody, even before the kidnap of Mazin Amdikano, they have never discussed him at the National Assembly, declaring him wanted. So you can imagine what they would do to themselves. Mazin Amdikano was kidnapped in Kenya he was not declared wanted by the, by the state, by the terrorist state. And look at what they are doing to him now. Then you will understand, you know, by the time if uh, they get themselves or how they will do it. So we know. And that's why I said I am learning from what happened to others. And Nigeria will face the, ruthless, the ruthlessness of the self-defense of the other people. We are just starting. They should wait until the declaration of the Afro in December 2nd. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and, yeah, then also, and then also, I want to use the opportunity to, you know, to correct some certain uh, information that are circulating on social media. On December 2nd, we are not declaring the Afro. For these illiterates that are going from one platform to another, shouting how someone else want to declare the Afro, that you cannot declare Biafra. We are not declaring the Afro. We are declaring the restoration of independent state of Biafra. The Biafra that was declared in 1967 to 1970 is what we are declaring the restoration. Thank and you. I want Thank you to understand you. the English language there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, my PM. He may call my Thank you, my PM. Thank you, my PM. Everybody know that Biafra existed as a nation. And uh, a nation that exists Thank can you, suddenly PM. stop existing. Yes. So, and uh, if they don't understand it, they should go back to school. Thank you, uh, Abu P. Oh, no, and uh, there's somebody I just brought into this room. We are not just OES members here. We we are not afraid of our haters. And that's why I brought you in the charisma. The charisma, I saw your thumbs down. Yes, and that's yes. That's why I brought you in. What is that your question? I'm getting you out there and making you thumbs down. Please make it count. You have 60 seconds. Okay then. Um, good evening to you all, and uh, thank you for bringing me up. I really have something to say because I've been joining the conversation like a lot of times, couple of times also. Um, to me, it's not a Be question. Before, before, sorry, before he start, what he is here to do, he have to make it very clear. He is here to ask question, not opinion. We don't need his opinion here. Let him ask oh. question, and I will address him, not his, giving his opinion. Thank you. Okay, sir. Okay. Please ask a question. Make sure it's a question. Okay, then. Let me question. make it a question. Let me make it a question. What's the purpose? I really want to know the purpose of declaring the Biafra nation in like, like yeah, I really want to know that. Let me make it a question. So I want to hear a very clear and you know very like good opinion why why we must make a Biafra nation in Nigeria. Thank you. That's my question. Not in Nigeria. We're never part of Nigeria. 
first of all, Nigeria is never a country. And we need to start discussing the root, you know, the root cause of the Biafra agitation. Do you know the root cause of the Biafra agitation? It was Republic of, Republic of Nigeria, I knew, not Republic you, of Biafra. You know, so you, if you okay, say Biafra you know, is not a nation... Do you know, nation, how, Nigeria, do you know how Nigeria became a, nation, uh, become a country in the first place? Of course I do. How? So how? how? I, I told you, say, I should ask a question, let you answer. Why you, I think you are asking me a question instead. Yeah, because you didn't ask any question. Your question I asked a question. question. I asked a question. Why must we declare question? a Biafra nation? Is uh, tell, does Biafra come now, before Nigeria? Nigeria is the Republic of Nigeria. Hey, listen, uh, uh, of Nigeria. Uh, please, are you listening, please? Just listen. And, you, say uh, why, uh, you say why I want to declare a Biafra. First of all, Biafra has been in existence over 5,000 years before Nigeria. Nigeria was just 100 years ago. Nigeria was forcefully amalgamated to become a country in 1914. During the amalgamation, Biafra consent was not seeked. Biafra did not give their consent to become one Nigeria. And before then, Nigeria was forcefully amalgamated under the gun and bullet of a man called Lord Lugan. So it was not a free will of even your own forefathers. They rejected Nigeria. And today, after 100 years, according to the story, and the agreement, they said after 100 years, people can now renegotiate the coexistence of their ethnic nationalities within Nigeria space. In 2014, was that 100 years. They sweep it under the, under the carpet. And that was the reason why we say we are not going to continue this particular union that has never favored us, the union that will never allow us to excel, to compete innovatively among other nations, the union that doesn't allow our women to have good hospital, the union that does not give, that is eradicating innovation and bringing tsunami, the union that does not allow our people to go to school and learn how to compete internationally, the union that has not given security only to supervise the debt of millions of their friends, the union that has never brought anything on the table other than debt of many nationalities. This is the union we don't want to be part of. That is the reason for Biafra declaration. Is that clear? Yeah, Mr. Simon, it's clear. Let me say one last thing before I drop. Uh, instead of that, I think uh, uh, the sol we need to find a solution to that, not we have, bringing we have, violence. We have, we have not violence. No, listen. violence will we're, not work. It will only destroy. Can you please, okay, can you please listen? Okay, can, can he go ahead? He's making a very good, uh, very good uh, comment here. Go ahead. Com com continue with your violence comment. Mr. Prime Minister, violence will never work. We need to find a solution instead of violence. We need um, to... Okay, okay, thank you very much. Go, thank you, very go on. Thank thank you, you so much. much. I would like to I would like to give you an opportunity to say something again. Now let me address the issue of violence. The question you should be asking is who is the one bringing the violence? Is it the Nigeria state or the Biafra people? The answer is the Nigeria state are bringing the violence, not the Biafra people. The Biafra people are just defending themselves after many years and decades of violence by the Nigeria state. In 2000, from 2015 to 2017, we have witnessed wanton killing mass killing, mass murder of the Biafra agitators that were carrying ordinary flag. Are you going to call that uh, Holy Communion? It was violent from the Nigeria state. In 2017, Mazinam the Kano house was invaded with armored tank. They shoot and leveled 28 persons. According to people who were there, they said they killed over 100 persons, but 28 was reported officially. Was there any violence from the Biafra side from that time? By that time, the answer is no. In Nepal, hundreds of Biafras were massacred, unarmed, only flag. It is the act of violence by the Nigeria state. In Aba, 150 was reported by Amnesty International in a playground, in a, play, a, play, a playing or playground in school where they were, where they, where they gathered and was chanting and singing music. The security agent of Nigeria invaded that school, killed 150 on the spot. Now, after this series of killing, I came on board. I said, I will not be part of a, the Biafra agitation where people will follow me and then they will get killed and I will shout and nobody listen to me. And what I'm going to do is I will activate the internationally recognized self-defense of the Biafra people. Under international law, we begin to provide the same equal measures of force that they are using to kill them. If they come with AK-47, we'll make sure that Biafra have AK-47 to defend themselves. 
If they come with GPMG, we make sure that Biafra have GPMG to defend themselves. And that's what is going on today. So where, who is the one who brought the violence? Is it us who have been killed in numbers and decided to defend ourselves? Or the government who have been killing and killing even those who have nothing to do with Biafra, they kill them. Children, they kill them. I want you to go and reflect on this. Who are the ones who brought insecurity or violence in the eastern region of Nigeria? It is the Nigeria government, not us. We are only as a result of the attack against our people and we defend ourselves. And today, we will not only defend, we will also embark on offensive very soon because the best defense is to attack. We have seen that they are not going to let us be. We have seen that their plan is to exterminate Biafra people. So we will start to make life very uncomfortable by the delegitimization process we are already going. So we are going to start visiting, visiting them very soon. It is not just about to uh, keep going and start waiting for when they come to kill us. We are to defend ourselves. No, we will make sure they leave our land. We are now in real business to liberate Biafra. It's no longer the time they will kill and will shout on social media. Nobody listen to us. So, my brother, that is what is going on. We are defending ourselves against the violence of Nigeria State. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very would much. You, would uh, you say now? Let me ask you a question uh, because I, you, before you were, you know, you came as, you know, but you, you were talking reasonably. So, what I said now was it a lie on the attack on the airport? Uh, Mr. Minister, what you said to me right now is well detailed and uh, it's understandable also, actually. You were defending yourself, which is uh, quite something reasonable to do. But, uh, that I know, I know, I know. Side I, just, of your I, just story. You, I just ask you, I want to, uh, I want an exact, you know, a, a very good uh, answer. Okay. You know, what like, do you think that what I said was lies? No, I don't think what you said was lies because I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of, I read a lot of history, a lot of things, like I watch a lot. So what you said, like, it's, I can't say it's a lie because me, it's might be true, you know. Uh, also, maybe what I heard might be the lie or might be the true or what you say might be the true or might be the lie. But I can't justify whether you're saying the true or you're saying okay. the lie. Okay, now let me well ask you, did you, did, you, did you hear, did you have, did you heard any time when IPOB were killed? about 150 of them during the uh, praying in uh, Abia State in Abba. I, I, did, I did hear that. I Thank you very much. Course. Thank you very much. Did you also hear that they were killed in a city, in a place called Mpo, during the May 30th, 2017? Of course. I, I've okay, thank been you. following the Biafra stone for a very long time, for years. Okay, now. thank you. And, you, and, and you agree with me that in all those killings, there has never been any consequences on the Nigeria side? That's true. I agree with Okay. That. So now that is where the consequences have started. So don't see it as we are the one bringing violence. We are ready for peaceful uh, discussion to exit. And diplomacy, for the definitely. diplomacy, we are also we are also following it diplomatically. And that's why because, we have and that's why we have government in exile. The government and, in exile is to take charge of every affair of the Biafra people in diplomacy, diplomatically, and of course as a government. So the formation yeah. of the Biafra government in exile is to follow the diplomatic channel. Why we cannot fold our hand as we fight diplomatically, we will also arm our people to defend themselves in Biafra land. And that's what is going on. So we are fighting. Because I think your Biafra people shouldn't pay for in. what the Nigerian government did. Your people shouldn't pay for that because there, there are going to be a lot of life that's going to be lost. So I think your people shouldn't pay for that. Yeah, exactly. That's what we are trying as much as possible to minimize casualties. But it is this, the same Nigeria state that comes to bond market burn the houses of innocent people who has not who has nothing to do with the Biafra movement. And because when they lose, you know, Nigerian army are not trained to be army. They are nomadic army. They are the they are the people, the definition of terrorism. Because the terrorism is when you use fear, install fear on people not to rise up against you, not to do use fear to acquire or get what you want. That is the definition of terrorism. And that's exactly what they do. So today they have been able to you know, put fear, install fear in many people that nobody can actually speak against them in Nigeria. And this is a democracy. A democratic country where military are having checkpoints everywhere. In the entire Biafra land, you have more than 60 checkpoints from one state to another. Is that a democracy? The answer is no. So they are creating this fear using terrorism and we are engaging them. And we just started. It's just less than one year they are crying and uh, seeking for help internationally. We are dealing with them, including the mercenaries they bring to our land they, were, they have all been decimated. Well, ask question. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Charisma. Thank you for being very, very you know, uh, gentle with your question and very reasonable. And uh, you need to go and look for some of those videos. We have evidences and we have videos. There is a clear video that is out there where you will see this um, full of me, uh, um, army, Nigerian Janja with army, shooting directly into houses. They were shooting and they were Please, shooting. I would like to see because I haven't seen any. You haven't seen this? Uh, okay, no problem. If you can just uh, uh, DM me on, uh, on my uh, DM, I will give you a link to all these videos. You are going to see them all for yourself. And then you will pass this message, message across and know that we are not the ones that are looking for trouble. We just want to defend ourselves and then live in peace. Thank you very much. And Chuko Kadama, bless you. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll move ahead. And uh, the question should come now from um, Brother Don. Brother Don, please uh, unmute yourself and bring your question. Yeah. Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, my PM, the guy that is doing it the best way ever. Uh, I just want to. Uh, a question really but not quite a question because there's no question i can ask to pm that really that he has already covered everything he's doing he's doing it by the template i want to help this brother now that asked question about nigeria and one thing please there is one thing people don't know if you go and use artificial intelligence ai or chat gpt ask about nigeria ask about biafra it will give you because he said you don't know about these things it will bring out everything you want it will even tell you about the man pm and the man our leader Mazi namdekano you're talking about evidence about killing people these people me standing here these people killed my father in barricade ladi so what you so if I rise up today and say I'm and defending my own people, you said why is he? We didn't take any violence to them. Please, they are the ones, you know, like our PM is saying, all checkpoints mounted everywhere. It's just a place you know that we are so uh, uh, we, we 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 make money. We are people who and they are just come to collect money and kill and they are using us as a business hub. PM, please keep it on. Just keep it on. I can't. I can say anything. The Israelites are our brothers, and we, our brothers they will be for eternity. Uh, one other thing is that these people, they, they tell you kidnapping. I don't like people using arrest for our leader. Please, please. All those people that use it, take it away. When you, maybe slip of tongue. It's not arrest, they kidnapped him. And if you go into the Bible, he said, uh, Abraham begat, Abraham begat. The Nigerian government from uh, Buhari, from everyone, they begat all the kidnappers you've seen. It, moving everywhere, that's their children. PM, I salute you. I'm standing up and I'm saluting you in Jesus' mighty name. Keep it up. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. All right, uh, please uh, grab the microphone. Marzi Benchuks Agubosim. Uh, thank you so much, Marzi uh, Ralph. Uh, thank you, Honorable PM. Thank you so much for the major wonderful tax you 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 take upon yourself in every ramification. Uh, PM, uh, my question is: uh, you you have promised Israel to. Uh, give give them uh, military aid. Uh, do you think it's not going to be a pressure to our BLA concerning the attacks uh, 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 beyond us uh, coming in the forthcoming of our restoration of uh, Biafra? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. 15,000 men to Israel is not going to affect us in any way. The only thing we need is more of the weapons to defend our land. That's all. Enough weapon is what we need. 20,000 men cannot even affect us as of today. So what we need is weapons for men we have enough and we can we can offer that help to Israel if they need ground forces up to 15 to 20 to 20,000. Thank you. Yeah, just quickly to, to join, you know, because uh, why I'm saying this is uh, Mozart, you know, they, they know how to go and pick their own when it comes to, to in terms of danger. Yeah, the, the, so, the war, the war.
today is not the uh, war of Mossad. This is not a war of liberation. It's a war, it's a confessional war that is going on. And like I said, at this point, it is still a technological war, which a drone is doing the job, and they are firing rockets and all that. But when the time for ground troop, we are ready for that. And it is not going to affect us in any way. Thank you. Thank rather, you so much. Rather, rather, it will boost the Biafra defense and the Biafra liberation. You know what I mean? Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, PM. Thank you, Mazi. It's a win win for us. Our men are surplus. If I need a wire, one wire, men, men need you everywhere. Men, day, men, day. Thank you very much. Okay, we move. Onye, Onye, Onye Chi Kamalu, Onye Chi Kamalu, please. Good, uh, good evening, on. everyone. Can you hear me? Go ahead, please. Good evening. Can you hear me, sir? Please go ahead. We can hear you. Have 60 seconds, please. Okay, okay. Um, good evening to. All right, wonderful people. Welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back to back updates and information as the hot. In case it's your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, you go be the first. We will collect them. Mbamba. Uh, as it be for the Obodo for Niger, the matter will be say it consign Mazinam the Kano or Hamadike one of the Bo as it be. Um, from the way we they see look of things, uh, if you like say the recent president, current president of NIG in the Obodo, Omano Mano, has entered into Wahala. Uh, because looking at Mazi. Uh, Nam the Colonel citation uh, during during his last court appearance, um, everybody was marvelled. Even the barristers, uh, the 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 legal counsel, sans judges who were by Mazin Nam the Colonel's side, uh, we are surprised for him to have cited uh, those parts of the constitution that he is not supposed to be tried in Nigeria. And that is another fallen inside of Pepe Soup uh, for the NIG president Ogabola Ahmed Tinubu because uh, that matter now is getting out of hand because for Mazi Nam the Kano to have cited uh, that particular law, it shows that hmm, something is is really 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 getting out of hand as it they be and um, um, everybody's wondering what is going to be the aftermath. What is going to be the uh, aftermath of this uh, particular case. And by the look of things, <laughs> my brother, I will tell you that uh, the, the NIG government is in hot pepper soup. Oh. The NIG government is in hot pepper soup because... Uh, from what I, I'm seeing, you find out that the NIG government is in big hot pepper soup. The pepper soup they are in is not just a pepper soup, but a hot one. Because when Kano cited that particular part of the constitution, if you watch that video, if you watch that video, if you have not watched the video, go down to, scroll down to my uh, eight days or maybe past five days broadcast or past three days broadcast, you will see that video there. Uh, where Kano was talking about, where was quoting the constitution. He cited the constitution and said that the NIG government does not have the right to try him. And when he cited the constitution, there was something he said. He said that the NIG government are bona fide members of this particular constitution. They signed the constitution that they cannot go back and fold their hand in the constitution because they are bona fide signatory to that particular constitution which they signed. That is to say that him, Mazen Nandekano, is not supposed to be tried in Nigeria, in Nigeria court. <laughs> um, there is something I want to say before I continue. Anything you are doing in this life, my brother, my sister, try to become experts in that thing. Whatever you are doing, 
um, you can be a mechanical, you can be a vulcanizer, you can be a welder, you can be a lawyer, you can be a, a politician. Is not even a, a is not a, an occupation because you can be anything. You can be an architect, but the main thing is that whatever you find yourself doing, make sure that you are the best in that thing. You know, when MNK appeared the last time in court, I looked at him. He was looking very fresh. He, he was not looking like someone that is in, in prison. At least he's looking fresh. He's not looking that, like someone that is in custody. And he still came out with his Fendi. With his Fendi. Now, if MNK is not educated enough, if he's not well read, how will he be able to defend himself? Did you see that MNK's two words have covered everything that the lawyers, you know, were trying to find out in the past four years uh, or in the, the past two years of this particular case? Past three years now, MNK in one day quoted everything. Honor, <laughs> it is good that whatever you are doing, try and become best in that uh, particular thing. Meanwhile, let's go to another information as uh, Ide Hot. Uh, police don't uncover plans to unleash mayhem in Kanu. Um, there has been a lot of uh, katakata recently in Kanu State due to the issue of Emia. And um, it looks as if this Emia and Monarchia traditional stuff of a thing, Igwe of a thing, the politicians has put hand into it. Yes. The politicians have decided to take over people's tradition in Africa in order to be able to control the people. Because the, the, the present government may want to install their own emir, someone who favors them. The past government also installed, removed the past emir and installed someone who favors them. Because they want to have an upper hand of politics in that particular locality. That is what is happening. It happened in Imo State 2008, then, during the time of um, Rocha Sokorocha, where the, the, the government allowed a particular number of people to form, the, to form an autonomous community of their own. And that was what, destroyed, what affected Imo State. The, that particular system of, of, of traditional ruling or government at the locality destroyed a lot of things because Ndibo, Ndibo, Ndibo has their tradition. Ndibo has their sacredness, likewise every other tribe. And when you desecrate this particular sacredness, what uphold the people, what the people are known for? You destroy the people, you destroy the ground. You destroy the foundation, the structure that the ancestors have laid, of which you know that this particular structure tradition has gathered the people for a number of years, for a long time, for a number of years. It has gathered the people for a number of years. And now you see politicians coming just all of a sudden to destroy whatever that has been built. Let's go down to what is particularly happening now in Kano State. I think that this particular scenario is only prevalent in Alibo, but looking at what is happening in Kano, you will find out that politics has come again. Amid the emirship puzzle in Kano State, the police have uncovered plans to unleash mehen in Northwest State. The police commissioner of the state, Husani Gumel, stated this in a press briefing at the government house late on Saturday. According to him, the police and other security agencies have mobilized to take down anyone trying to cause terror in the state. We have uncovered criminal intelligence by some group of people who are considered as enemies of the state. Miscrants who are trying to unleash terror in the state by embarking on targeted attacks on locations, particularly the House of Assembly, as well as some privileged location within the state capital, he said. The police commissioner said the plot has been verified by so many sources. 
Anybody who wants to test the ground, security has the capacity to deal with the miscreant. We have perfected plans to embark on serious patrol and detection on locations where we are informed by the miscreants are hiding. He added, We are going to embark on a house to have search. Anybody who feels he is stronger than the law should try it. Can we remain safe and nobody can override the decision? The issue of chieftaincy affairs have been perfected by the executive arm of government. We are standing by the law and we are strictly going to enforce the existing law, he added. Governor Abakari Abba Kabi had on Thursday dethroned Aminu Ado Bayero and replaced him with Muhammadu Sanusi II, a development that has been met with protest. Uh, my people, when I don't see, I see they happen. Uh, now, the governor of Kanu State now in the throne, the, 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 the current emir, and install the former emir who was also dethroned by the past government. And you can see that this is politics at its peak. <laughs> politics at its zenith. Um, when politicians try to play politics with traditional traditions, and customs of the people, uh, you will find out that these some of these things have usually have a bad repercussion in the community and among the people. I think that politicians should try their best to separate politics with the people's tradition. Yes, because if the people's tradition are separated from politics, you will find out that the people will have a voice. The, the governor is there. The, 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 the emir that he wants to install is his person. Now, when he installs this emir, you find out that the people will not have a mouth of their own. The people will not have someone who can speak for them because the emir is governor's friend. Whatever the governor does is good. I think um, uh, politicians should uh, leave all this fundamental things, elementary matters, and focus on building the nation. Africa is falling. Nigeria itself is falling. The northern part, the southern part, the eastern part, the western part is falling. The economy is nothing to write home about. The economy is, is, has dwindled. It has gone down, and the government has decided not to look into some of these things. What they are looking into is installing and removing of EMEA, uh, and also ways of making sure that they oppress the people more and more. Meanwhile, this is where I'll be winding down the question. And if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go on and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to all your notification buttons so that whenever our news drop, it will be the first we'll collect them. Thank you for listening. God bless you. The first thing that came out of the amount is Omekwaranogeni. Omekwaranogeni. Uh, that language says, what did Simon Eba do? And why are the NIG government after that man? <laughs> Let's go down to the full detail of the information so that you can see as it be. Um, there was uh, some time ago, uh, some people were arguing with me, you know. They said, Simon Eba is a nobody. Uh, Simon Eba is this, Simon Eba is that. I, I was asking, I say, have you gone through the biography of the man we are talking about they said no i said why are you making a blind argument because for you to discuss about somebody you must have done an underground check research search about the person before you start talking meanwhile for the benefit of doubt i, I want us to just look at uh Mr. simon Eba. Uh, this is according to the information wikipedia 2023 says that simon Eba was born on march 1985, age 39, uh, from Ohuku, Ebony State, Nigeria. Citizenship, Finnish. He's a citizen of Finland. That's the citizenship of Mekuna de Yara. <laughs> Occupation, politician, years of active, 2019 till date. Organizations, Biafra Republic Government in Exile, Biafra Rebellion Army. These are two organizations he has, he, he has known for Biafra separatism, political party, national coalition party, movement, independence of Biafra, award, 
ambassador of peace. Now, let's go back down to a little bit early life of Maze uh, Simon Eba. Uh, around as far back as 2003, Eba won the 100 meter silver medal for Nigeria at the 20, 2003 African Junior Athletic Championship in Cameroon. He left athletic because of a new problem. Since 2017, I mean, since 2007, he has lived with his family in Leyte, Finland. He learned Finnish, became a citizen, and did military service in the Finnish military at the Heme Regiment in Henala in 20, 2013, as well as res reservist, reservist in the Finnish Army. He was a candidate in the 2022 Finnish count county election under the National Coalition Party of Finland. As of 2023, he is a city councillor in Laiti. <laughs> uh, make when they see the kind of man that the, some people open their mouth and say, uh, that man is nothing, that man is that. Meanwhile, make a cut it short on this side uh, because the man is now now want to if you want to get it or they call the no loo. Uh, Another information, Kepu Kepu done the land for Ebony State, uh, where they have big clash uh, between the men of the NIG police combined team and uh, some unknown men, uh, but some information done the leak say, uh, say, uh, now the BLA boys, now then carry that woto woto. Uh, go give NIG them boys and uh, as it be but the, the main thing where we say it happened for that place we say some people uh, collected water water as it be another information just dropped uh, that canons judicial saga IPOB demand state of emergency in judicial sector <laughs> uh, they say IPOB don't demand state of emergency for this judicial sector in order to be able to give Maze Nam the Kano uh Omadike one of Ndibo justice. Uh, and my question is um many prominent people in Nigeria I'm not in any way saying that Maze Nam the Kano is not prominent. He is a prominent Igbo man, a promising child of Ndibo. But what I'm trying to say is that the people in power now, look at what is happening in Kanu, uh, whereby Emir of Kanu, the former Emir, was removed during the government of Buare and presently uh, uh, replaced him with another one. As it will be, presently the government of in the government of Tinubu and the government of Kaba in Kanu State have also dethroned uh, uh, the, the present Emir and has installed Sanusi back. Let me take you to what the IPOB members are saying. They say that uh, there should be a state of emergency in judicial sector because of uh, Mazen and the Kano. As the, news go, as the news goes, dissatisfied with the Nigerian judicial system, indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, on Monday demanded from the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Oluko Yade Ariwola, a state of emergency in judicial sector. Making the demand in an open letter made available to newsmen through her image maker, Emma Powerful, IPOB said it felt compelled to bring to the attention of the chief judge the ongoing choreographed perversion of the cause justice taking place in Abuja court in the case of AGN, FGN versus Mazen Namdekano. We equally urge your immediate intervention to arrest this ongoing desecration of the rule of law being conducted in full view of the public and civilized world. It is shocking and beyond belief that a high court judge sitting in Abuja will state boldly in an open court of law and on record that she would not obey or have regard for any determination made by the Supreme Court of Nigeria. It is in each SC, judgment in respect of the matter remitted back to her court. Surely, Chief Justice, this is an invitation to judicial anarchy and procedural lawlessness. For the purpose of clarity, we state that the issues determined by the Supreme Court are the 
premeditated murderous military invasion of the Isiama Afaruku Ibeku country home of Mazen Nambekano, subsequent fight to saf safety following the above invasion and bill restoration. On these three issues, the Supreme Court held in their judgment, which was read by Emmanuel Agame, JSC, in open court on 15th December 2023, in what was, in what was at the time billed as the lead judgment that the invasion of the home of Mazen and the Kano by armed agents of the federal government of Nigeria comprises of the DSS, military and police is unlawful, illegal and contempt of court. These are the exact words used by the Apex Court in Nigeria to describe the conduct of the Nigerian government in the above regard. To make matters worse, according to their lordship in same judgment, the then Attorney General of the Federation, Malami, and the trial judge knew about the illegal and unlawful invasion of the home of Mazen and the Kano, yet proceeded to deceive themselves and conceive to revoke the bill earlier granted an issue, in the words of the justice and unlawful bench warrant. All these words were used in the finding of the Alpes Court, which is not only before the trial court but a matter of public record. Before your retirement, there is an urgent need for you to declare a state of emergency in judicial sector. This should include but not restrict to the restraining of some high court judges on the manner of proper interpretation of judgment, decision and opinions of superior court of record. My people now don't see as they happen for that matter now the IPOB members and uh, then they talk this one they remind the chief judge say and now you who uh, it's better that you declare state of emergency in order to be able to arrest the situation that is prevalent in the Nigerian judicial system. Uh, remember, if you want to talk about Nigeria judicial system and what is in Nigeria judicial system, my brother, <laughs> I don't think uh, you and I will be able to go today because um, the judicial system is more like a potted jam to the executive arm of the government. <laughs> if I should put it this way, that the judicial system of the NIG government is more like a potage yeah, eh, to the executive arm, because all the offices, the highest office in the judicial is by appointment. Meanwhile, on another section, I will tell you why these people are potage in the hand of the executive, eh, because we are told in government in school that the reason for the arms of government is for check and balances. It is for check and balances. I don't know if you are getting the point. It is for checks and balances. Meanwhile, um, but when it comes to this country as it be, you find out that uh, there is nothing like checks and balances. Everybody is God for themselves. Uh, and um, if you're a president or you're a governor, you'll love every other person. Thank you for listening, my people. God bless you.